Good morning and welcome to Breakfast in Barbados. And today I have a very special guest and his name is Adrian Cumberbatch. And I just want to show you something extra special, right? Because this is probably as close as I'm going to get to it. This is absolutely fabulous. Taste of the Caribbean. And Adrian Cumberbatch is responsible for taking the winning team, as in the group. Yes, the team Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago to the gold. Yes, and Caribbean Team of the Year. Caribbean Team of the Year, yes. right. And what's even more interesting about Adrian Cumberbatch, who took the team to gold, <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago team, is that he's 100% Bajan. I love that. How are you doing, Adrian? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? I am wonderful. Nice. Let me, I really want to see this journey where a young man takes the Trinidad and Tobago team to the Taste of the Caribbean, wins the group, gold, and the Team of the Year. Yes. How this big and young man gets there. So let's start about where you grew up here in Barbados. Um, I grew up in um, Lower Carlton, St. James in Barbados. Mm -hmm. Moved to Warren Terrace. Um, was educated at St. Stephen's Primary. Mm -hmm. Then I went on to the Coach and Prairie Secondary School. Mm -hmm. And after that, I had applied for the Pomering Hotel um, School here. Mm -hmm. I was declined. You were declined? Yes, I was declined. Um, entry into the school. Mm -hmm. Um, that same summer, I said from young, going back and forth with Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. Is that because of a family connection? Yeah, my, my mom is the, was the vice president of the Barbados Hockey Federation for 15 years. Okay. And, and she travels a lot with cricket too as well, you mm -hmm. know. So back and forth, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, as a youngster growing up. Went to, um, that same summer was declining at Pomerine. Mm -hmm. Went to the hotel school in Trinidad and was successful. So I did my associate's degree in culinary management at the Trinidad and Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute. Okay, well, we are in Trinidad now. Wait, 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 we gotta go back and then we will come forward. Or as a friend of mine would say, we'll go back and then come back forward, all right? <laughs> Your interest in food, mm -hmm. where did that stem from? From as early as you can remember food and cooking and your love of food? Um, from watching my grandmom cook, watching my mother cook growing up in Carlton, you know? Um, we weren't always a uh, gold spoon in the mouth family. Um, so see her going back to pick the mobby, to, to scrape the mobby bark from the tree to make mobby. Mm. Uh, you want breakfast in the morning, you want scrambled eggs, you, bet, you better get on empty cellar to get your, move the chicken to That's get eggs. That's as fresh as they get. As, as fresh as possible, you know. Mm. Um, so watching her cook her salt fish and split peas and rice and mm. really little coast on the side, come home on an evening from school. See her make her dumplings, you know, at night when you're watching TV and you know cornflakes, so you make your rice tea, you mm. know. My granddad used to work on the sugar plantation too as well, so mm. a lot of sugar cane, a lot of um, buckets and buckets of sugar we used to have home too as well to give all wow. the neighborhood. And, and with that, he had, they had land from the, um, the plantation owners, so a lot mm. of cassava, edos, and all these things mm. would come home. So she used to make plenty of dishes. So and I had an interest in baking and mm -hmm. cakes before. Um, it's to help her make great coconut to make her sweet bread, you know, Christmas time. Did you ever get your knuckles all scraped yeah, off? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the old rusty Ooh, box yeah, 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 yeah. We all have those days. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Then my mom, she used to do a lot of cooking too as well for us, as well, my brother and I, mm -hmm. um, growing up. He's 10 years old now, myself. So okay. um, that's really, I used, the love for cooking stem from, you know, um, from, from a young age watching my, my grandmother and my mom cook home. So that's where it came from. So in secondary school, at some point, did you do the, what was then home, home economics, I suppose, no, I at did your not. time? Believe it or not, I, I did art, woodwork, metalwork, uh, building drawing, technical drawing. I did all the other boy stuff. Instead okay. of home, you know, back in the days of the stigma, you know, you yeah, go to you home ec class, that. you don't do yeah. home ec class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I never did it at school, at Corrigan and Parry, never did it. So you finished Corrigan and Parry, better known as CP for all of the past students who would probably say, you should have called it CP, CP. And then you apply to Palm Marine. So at some point, when you come from doing metal work, woodwork, technical drawing, and then what clicks off in your head and says, I'm going to apply to Pomerine. Is it that there was nothing else to do and you had to do something or you really thought that food I, is where you want to go? I then had an idea that I would have gone down the food, food line. Mm -hmm. I had the qualifications for Pomerine, you know, mm. um, the basics. But 
my friends in my class too as well, they got through to Bomberry. Mm. And there, that was the big thing, you know. They went to Barbie Student College. They, some went to Barbie Student College, some went to Palmer Ring. So I was like lost in the air, tossed in the air, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, too, a little secret, applied for the Barbados Police Force. Okay. But I was too young at that time, still. So. Okay. Then, you know, that's when I ended up in training now mm -hmm. for the summer. And mm -hmm. that's where I ended up at the hotel school in training and got through one time my qualifications and learned from there. Tell me about your experience coming through the hotel school. Now, bearing in mind, this isn't something you thought for the last five years or four years of going to secondary school. Mm -hmm. I am going to learn all I can about food. Mm -hmm. But you're actually in cooking school now in Trinidad. Talk me through that process. Well, the first year, you know, Trinidad is a carnival city. Mm -hmm. The first year was only party. <laughs> I believe it. I'll be honest. <laughs> You try to study, and my friends, you meet up more friends in Trinidad, mm -hmm. and it was only party. Then, like, hey, you know what? You got to buckle down. This mm -hmm. thing getting, you know, your mom spent a lot of money to, to send, right. to keep you alive down there, you know? So, you got to buckle down. Um, the experience was good. I learned the basics of the culinary world. From there, um, I, I met a lot of chefs in, 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 in Trinidad, too, as well, you know? A lot of... Um, dominant chefs in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. um, so the experience for the culinary for the, from the hotel school down there and doing little one two catering and here and right. I, I started to, to fell in love with this thing. Like, okay. You know, I ease off the baking because baking and cake is is patience. Mm -hmm. I, I hardly have that. You know, <laughs> weighing and measuring. I have to be precise. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, so I come over to the savory side. Mm -hmm. I start to work my way. I realize that. You know what? I got. I really love this thing. I really love to create. Mm -hmm. I love art. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely, I, I, I'm in love with art, so I realize that, you know, it's culinary arts. Mm -hmm. it's a, it is an art, you know, and I realize that, you know, I said, Adrian, I, I still, at this point, wasn't thinking that I'm going to go far. Right. You know, I just thinking I'm going to be a chef somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and, and that is basically the beginning of my career from hotel school. So, you're actually living in Trinidad, obviously. You started off by going to school there. Yeah. At what point did you decide, I'm no longer a student, but I like the whole Trinidad vibe. I'm going to stay here. This is where I see that I can make. Let's just deal with some money, make a living, mm -hmm. not to the point where you're at yet. What made that decision where I'm going to stay in Trinidad? Um, I, I actually, when I finished hotel school, I actually went on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. I work on a cruise ship. Wow. It was, for me, I'll be honest, the worst experience. You know? Really? I was working 17, 18 hours a day, no days off a week for nine months straight. And it was, I was like, Adrian, it's not for me. Wow. <laughs> it's not for me. But from the other side, you know, you said um, cruise ship, so everybody, I'm thinking, ooh, that sounds glamorous. <laughs> but I'm thinking as being a guest on a cruise ship, not necessarily no, being no, no. a worker on a cruise ship. And we were, we were doing 5,000 covers per week because it, do it, it was a three and a four day cruise. Mm -hmm. So every time you get back to port, people coming on and going, so there's no stopping. So you right. keep going and you keep going. Um, but in the background of, in a, in a galley of a, of, a, of a cruise ship, it's plenty of work. And it was at my forte too as well, you know? Mm -hmm. I, like, I, didn't, I didn't like it as well, you know? I even, um, if you see my hand, I got a scar. I even cut myself on purpose to get some time off from work, you know? Because- It's a bit drastic. <laughs> <laughs> it Jeez. was, it was, it was, it was, it was gruesome, trust me, it was hard. It was wow. real hard. Wow. Um, Did you take any positives though? Did it help shape your character, even though it wasn't your best experience? The cultures of people, mm. of different cultures, the Indians, the Filipinos, I, I, I was drawn towards that. Mm -hmm. You know, how they work, they, they were ethics as well, is okay, this guy is doing this thing. Mm -hmm. But something inside me is not my forte. Okay. I came back home in 2004 applied to the Fairmont Bitter Bay. There's where I met John Hazard, okay. Chef John Hazard. Um, John Hazard, I think in 2004, he won the Caribbean Chef of the Year at the Taste of the Caribbean too as well, mm -hmm. 2004, 2005. And it's there I started to watch him. Um, find the background, never approaching about it, but watch him compete. His, his work ethics are phenomenal. His mm -hmm. attention to the detail. I remember he made me made 500 crockets. And when it reached about 300 or something, I had to do them over again because they weren't all perfect, you know? And he wow. was very adamant that they had to be perfect. And, and yeah, he does put art on the plate. He really does. From him, from him um, pushing the team, I, I took some from him. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, 
I could learn that from 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 John Hazard. Mm -hmm. And the Fairmont Glitter Bay was a kids friendly hotel too as well. So it wasn't the upscale mm -hmm. fine dining that I really wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Next door was the Fairmont Roy Pavilion, which is the five diamond upscale restaurant, you know, where guests pay eighteen hundred US a night to stay, so you have mm -hmm. to be. And most of the young chefs there were some from Carlton and some from so I, from the neighborhood around. Okay. So I watching these guys I want to get on a team, you know, I want to you know, I go in there, um, work on the Jean Claude Pilong from France. Um, then I met Michael Harrison. Okay. Phenomenal. <laughs> I I always give him eleven or ten. He mm -hmm. he is very, 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 very creative. Mm -hmm. We have been through a lot together too as well. He taught me a lot at the Fairmont. Then I got on the dinner team. Okay. At the Fairmont. So I working with dinner I work in dinner. Then Michael Harrison in competition too as well, you know? And then we started to do NIFCA. I got some gold medals in NIFCA, silver, bronze at NIFCA awards. So all this time you're building your skills and you're also right. learning about the competitive side of things Correct. as well. That's where I now start fall in love with the competitive time, yeah. um, side of the of cooking now. Mm -hmm. um, come Michael and these guys based in Charlton too as well, you know, executive sous chef at the, at the Fairmont. Um, Elroy Dull, all these guys assisted me in developing, you know. These mm -hmm. guys go to Mexico to compete. I watch them like, hey, I want to compete too. How can I compete? You know? So let me say, so I worked my way into NIFCA. From NIFCA now, uh, Michael said, wait, we don't try out for the team, you know, the Barbados culinary team. That's 2006. Mm -hmm. What's that process like, by the way? Try to, try out, to try out for the team. You know, it's not just a case of you, 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 and you, just people walking around picking people randomly, but you have to actually try out for it. Um, it, it the process um, for that experience for me, um, I, had, I had a lot of training from Michael. So we did create dishes. He gives mm -hmm. a little guidance on mm -hmm. The process is um, through a mystery basket. Um, they give you a mystery basket. You have two hours to complete this mystery basket. The mm -hmm. first hour you can't cook. On the second hour you can, you begin cooking and you present your three dishes to the judges. And they choose the first, second, and third highest marks. Mm -hmm. And that's when it was in Barbados. That's how it went at that time. Mm -hmm. The first two, the pastry chef um, would have made the team. And mm -hmm. the first bartender would have made the Barbados culinary team. I think the first year, 2006, I tried out, I, I came like nine for a time for then. You know, I was very disappointed, you know. Um, but it also shows the standard of the, rest, the, rest the quality of the other yeah. as well. And, and hats off to um, Mitchell's husband, Craig Greenwich. Mm -hmm. I have to give these guys a big shout out because I too learn from them. Mm -hmm. I too learn from these guys, you know. They were always um, dominant, always going at it, always mm -hmm. trying out, you know, and, it's, and you can see from the success that they are at mm -hmm. today. The next year I went back, I came second on, on the competition, you know, I was like, yes, I made the bar with this thing, elated, excited, you know, started to train, going to training, it was training upstairs by um, Manor Lodge, mm -hmm. all right, um, you were outside in the, um, on the tent in the car park too, so training, you know, your team, you're training then, unfortunately it was told that it wasn't good enough more put in layman terms to be on the bar with this team. Wow. How do you feel at that point? Very disappointed. Um, after all the training and long hours and um, as training, and we said toting boxes and tools back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, it was very, very disappointed. Um, I felt like, you know, you get a hard lash in your stomach and you just lose all your air. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like, okay, Adrian. So they went to Miami. Um, I, I took a break for a little bit, worked on my personal skills, worked along again with Rick Lee from Canada. Mm -hmm. He came down, I learned a lot from him too as well. So I started the frame one. Then my, a friend of mine from school called me and told me that, hey, we opened up a new boutique hotel in Trinidad to build called Cardinal Savannah Hotel. Mm -hmm. And we have a sous chef position open up for you. So I told him about it. So, uh, okay, let's go. Let's try it out. As soon as I went in 2009, they had to come, the shogun, the Commonwealth head of government, right. and the queen came down. I was chosen to be her personal chef when she came down. So I was like, wow. You know? Wow. So I was like, uh, right, this big one here, this is a big thing, Adrian, let's go, you know? Had to get some um, ethical training. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> there's certain things yes, you can't yes. do. Yes, you can't turn your back on the queen. You exactly. Can't, so, you know? Even the way how you serve things. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, so me and her personal butler were close before she came down, what would I expect? He polished them everything, you know, real tip top. That experience was good, you know, that experience was good. Um, her husband, um, 
he was the fun one in the pack, you know. <laughs> He's the more That's relaxed cool. one, yeah. <laughs> yes. Then I saw uh, uh, and through email um, looking for chefs to compete for the Trent and Bigger National Culinary Team. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, opportunity here. So I called, I asked them, can a Barbadian Because I was just thinking <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> Bajan. Can a Barbadian cook on a team? And they were like, do you have um, carrot CSME? Like, yes, I have my CSME. Cause I was the first, when the first, after um, carry come, roll out CSME, roll mm -hmm. out the first uh, to obtain one. Right. And they said, yeah, you're working in Trinidad? Yeah, you're legal? They said, yes. Mm -hmm. It's okay, yeah, you can compete. So I was frightened because at this time now, I do my research and Trinidad and Tobago was the team to beat at the mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. At that time, they had four titles. The only Caribbean island to have four at that time. Right, right. So in 2010, I competed and I won Trinidad and Tobago Chef of the Year. Wow. So I was the first chef on the team for Trinidad and Tobago, you know. And um, we went to Puerto Rico. We got gold medal, but we didn't want Caribbean Team of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, that first year I went, I got bronze medal too. I was like, in, in the individual category, it was like, this guy is coming out real hard. This mm -hmm. guy is coming out top, top, top. You know, in 2011, went back to compete locally in Trinidad and Tobago, won Chef of the Year again. And um, we went to Miami under Raymond Joseph, executive chef at Courtyard by Marriott in Trinidad. And we won Caribbean Team of the Year that year. That feeling was amazing, you know. Um, mm. That was the fifth title for Trinidad and Tobago and the first for Captain Raymond too as well. So we okay. were all jovial. It was a good feeling inside. We came out to the airport, got the VAP long street man. Mm. After that, it just dwindled away because for, for Trinidad and Tobago, their tourism is not their um, number one sustainability right. for, you know, for the country. It's oil and gas. So mm. tourism is a distant second back. So they really hear nothing not much about it. Um, a good friend of mine in Barbados, Kenneth McLean, told me, you want to you want to be a good chef of the year twice, don't go back. Because if you go As back... You don't go back. For the third year. If, okay. you, if you go back and, and, you, and you get beat, you're going to look real bad. So I skip a year, mm -hmm. 2012, you know. Um, I went to Tobago to work, at the, to open up the Magdalena Grand Hotel in Tobago mm -hmm. through the government. Um, spent a year and a half, two years there. Went back in 2013, compete, competed again. Um, for the culinary team training at Tobago, made a team. We went back to Miami and we got another gold medal. That year, Barbados won with Michael Harrison. Barbados won Caribbean Team of the Year, you know? Um, I felt. Because <laughs> the whole week, Michael and I, as friends, back before, forth, back we back and forth at each yeah. other, you know? We, it, it's a sportsman thing, you know? Yeah. But congratulations to him and the team that year. Um, well, let me, let me pause right there. When you go, now you're, you're representing. Team Trinidad, yes. you're seeing um, Barbadians, obviously, people that you have worked with and all yeah. kinds of things. Has there ever been a question like, what, what are you, what are you I think, tr I, Team Trinidad, especially where you started to win a lot, you know? <laughs> hey. I, I think um, the ones that are close to me know my story as well. Mm -hmm. And they're happy that I could get out of the country and, and be successful. Um, as one said to me, one man's trash is the next man's treasure. Okay, don't, don't, don't say any more. We'll be right back with more right here on Breakfast in Barbados. Breakfast in Barbados. L and Bear. L and Bear. L and Bear. L and and there, how do you L and there? Take a moment to L and there with your options of Yago, fruits, and 0% fat yogurts made from real milk using real fruits. Distributed by Supreme Distributors. MIS Spices have been flavoring the pots of Barbadians for over 25 years. Available island-wide at all eating supermarkets, MIS Spices come in a wide variety of flavors like black pepper, Cajun spice, bacon bits, crushed chili flakes, coriander powder, cumin powder, curry powder, basil leaves, celery salt, and blackened spice. Celebrity chefs and mixologists use MIS spices to enhance the flavor of their creations. MIS products, making it special for you, for you, for you. Are you 
Welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados at the beautiful Santosha. And with me is Chef Adrian Cumberbatch. And he is the leader of the winning team, Trinidad and Tobago, for the taste of the Caribbean. Yes. And we've been hearing some wonderful stories, at least his wonderful story. I want to find out about your love for food in general, but now you're in Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. living. What are some of your favorite things to eat? Without being a chef, without being a chefy, what would you go down the road and buy? Um, I'll go and buy um, alu pie, mm -hmm. um, doubles, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to like well meat, so like iguana and, and, and tattoo and lap and well there. These things I like to buy. When tattoo I, when I, and lap? Yeah. Okay. Amadillo. <laughs> it's a lot of well meat in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> so it's my favorite. Sometimes that, that's my favorite meal too as well, or curry crab and dumpling and mm. these things there. Nice. I would like to have too as well, yeah. Okay. Where are you actually working now? Um, I work at the Highgate Regency in um, Trinidad as executive sous chef. Okay. Yeah. And your responsibilities there? My responsibility is for all the... We actually have the largest meeting space in the whole English-speaking Caribbean. Mm -hmm. We have over 40,000 square foot of meeting space. So sometimes that ballroom, we have functions for 1,200, 500, for 600, could go on at the same time. Um, our breakfast restaurant um, be very busy as well. Uh, sometimes doing 300 to 400 every morning for breakfast as well. Mm -hmm. um, most of the local population as well um, are oil guys from oil and gas coming mm -hmm. in. We also have a, su a sushi restaurant as well. Mm. So we, we that's my responsibilities. I'm a team of 96 chefs. 96 chefs. Yeah. That I manage. Oh. Um, and also, to we have one of the biggest fets for Carnival, Lime Fet, mm -hmm. which is 500 US per ticket. Wow. And it's food out of this world, like champagne, food, um, plenty, plenty, plenty of stuff. You get massages, party, you know, everything, everything. How do you keep your quality up, your, your menus fresh, your meals, where people want to come back for more because that's the whole point of it. People have to want to come back to eat your food. I have a uh, okay, I have 96 chefs. I have 18 managers. Okay, those 18, I have three senior chefs that are right below me in, in, um, on the scale. Um, and we sit together regularly and come up with menus and new concepts. And we are always, I always try to be six months ahead of the rest of my team. So by the time we reach um, Christmas, um, I already done that already since June, July. Okay. And then so planning is everything. Yeah, you must plan. You, and especially with a fast pace hotel like that, you must be you must be six months ahead. You must be six months ahead. No, I'm sure like me, many of you have just heard him talk about being responsible for ninety six chefs and all those kind of things and you're looking at thinking, How old are you? I mean you look <laughs> so young. Seriously, not that, that youth has a lot or everything to do with it, but you just look really young for Half of the experiences you've had, responsibilities that you presently have, mm -hmm. I mean... I'm 33 years old. 33 <laughs> years old. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. All righty. Now let's talk about the winning team, Trinidad yes. and Tobago, Taste of the Caribbean, putting that team together yes. and leading that team. What does that entail? Um, Trinidad and Tobago was on a hiatus for two years. Mm -hmm. We didn't go to the competition because of... Um, government restraints. So 2013 was the last year we went. Um, last year the government changed and, they and the, the new Minister of Tourism, um, she insisted that uh, along with my president of the Trinidad Restaurants Hotels and Tourism Association, um, they insisted that we take a team back to Miami. You know, trying to make up five titles already. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, CHTA is emailing, when is Trinidad coming back, you know, because Trinidad's missed from the competition. And usually, I wasn't supposed to be the captain this year. Mm -hmm. um, Sabrina Rosales, the captain, she was the vice captain in 2013 under Raymond Joseph. 
she was supposed to have it next year because three year contracts the captains have right. in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And she has her own business, so this year she was setting her own business, so she couldn't go. So they looked at me and said, Adrian, um, we would like you to be the captain in Trinidad and Tobago team. I was Were like, you daunted or kind of? I was happy because I was, I was like competition. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a bit scared at, in the beginning too as well, like, should I take this? Because I never had training, it was just like swim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, never had training, so it was like, it was a big responsibility. I got some big shoes to fill because five titles, everybody looking at us mm -hmm. to win this thing back again, you know? And I was like, agent, okay, so here yourself, use your training from the Hyatt and, and implement it in this team. It's a little team of eight, mm -hmm. it's smaller. <laughs> So use the training from okay. the Hyatt and, and your knowledge from before, from all these chefs that I've called before, um, take a little piece from each one, create your own unique um, individual management skill mm -hmm. and, and let's go this team. Um, they started January the 17th for the local competition called Making the Cut. We had 42 chefs apply for that. Yeah. Um, so you do, for something like this, you do a lot of advertising or Yes, our, our new um, CEO, Brian Fountain, he did a lot of pushing the advertising because he started in November. Right. And one of his main goals um, was to ensure the team gets back to where they are, where we are today. And we did a lot of training, a lot of training. Um, the, team was in Mar the team was announced in March. Um, we chose a junior chef, the two senior chef, the pastry chef, the bartender, um, alternative chef and an alternative bartender just in case someone gets ill. Right. That's my team. That's it. And um, we started training in March the 17th, every Monday from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night. We train. So what would, um, say the mystery basket, mm -hmm. which is, I find wherever you go and you have chefs dealing with the mystery baskets, mm -hmm. you, can, you can find people like they open it and like, yes, or they open it and like, what on earth is that? Did you mm -hmm. do a lot of that, just getting mystery baskets and just... We, we sat, besides on a Monday, we sat on a Wednesday and Thursday night, 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. We had meetings at 11 to 3 in the morning. We sat and we come up with concepts. Okay, if they give us this, we're going to put it in that. Mm -hmm. If they give us Christophine, we're going to make slaw or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Whatever it is, we, we come up with a concept, the flavor profile that we just have to add the ingredients to it once right. you open that mystery basket. So that concept training, that concept brought a lot because chefs has big egos. All chefs have big egos, big, big, big egos. We all do. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody thinks that their dish is always the best. Mm -hmm. So to bring my team to level playing field, sometimes so I, I sit back and listen to them. Okay, you give me an idea. It might not work out uh, that day, and they might feel that I didn't listen to them on that timing. But when they go home, I used to not analyze my day, and you know what, say, Adrian, that probably makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it may, work, it may not work now, it may work two weeks down the road, you know, at a different practice session or a different um, implementation right. of a dish. So we had a lot of fighting, we had a lot of arguing, we had a lot of... you kind of preempted the question, how do you deal with creative people, mm -hmm. but creative people who are obviously at the top of their game, yeah. in their particular hotel, restaurant, whatever, mm -hmm. how do you bring them to a point where they're like, okay, it's not about me anymore, mm -hmm. it's about Team Trinidad? Um, it took a lot. It, I, had a, I brought in some chefs that were in competition before mm -hmm. to do a lot of motivational speaking to them. Um, showed a lot of videos and pictures of different countries of the cuisine that 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 happened at Taste of the Caribbean over the years. Okay. Um, held little small competitions in between each other to get them in that competition mode. Mm -hmm. On my team, of the eight, four were brand new. It was okay. only myself, um, Jeremy Lavelle, and um, the bartender that had experience at this competition. All the rest were new. Mm -hmm. The average age of my team is only 23. So mm. they're young, 21, 22, 24. The oldest was me on the team, you know? That young ego, I had to bring it down, mellow it down. Sometimes I had to use the chef language, you know? <laughs> and to get their mindset, <laughs> to get their it's mindset. It's a chef language. <laughs> it's not a chef language. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to. You have What's to. up with the chef language? That's good. I you know? can't do that. I can't say that. <laughs> Like just chef language. That's but, all. But if you burn some the kitchen, you will hear it. <laughs> and, Behind the scenes. Yes, yes. Um, but to get their mindset, because competition cooking and 
cooking is two, two, two totally different mm -hmm. things, you know? To get their mind from you know, out the kitchen, their comfort zone, mm -hmm. to working behind a table that a judge set up for you, and to work clean as well, because being clean, the they, they judges really look at that. Right. That's my, I, I, I very sticklish with that. You have mm -hmm. to work clean, you know? Mm -hmm. And you work like you know what you're doing too as well. You work, you work in unison, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, till okay. you finish. Um, don't be back and forth and running like your head crazy. I don't, I, so I had to drive that in your head. Mm -hmm. Keep it in your head, you know? Um, even on the team, I was, I was literally two millimeters from cutting the pastry chef of the team, you know? How can a girl that won, or a lady that won the Trent Tobago Pastry Chef of the Year in January, phenomenal dessert, she make a goat cheese cheesecake mm -hmm. with a guava glaze, you know, with a lime coolie, wow. lime sponge, mango, macaron. It was phenomenal, real Caribbean plate. Mm -hmm. And then during practice, her standard dropped drastically. And I was getting frustrated at first, mm -hmm. like this girl's frustrating me, you know? But again, when I, in my, when I home with myself, I, I'm thinking about my team and everything, I say, you know what? It is a transition. She's going through the transition from comfort in a pastry shop with air condition, nicely, mm -hmm. have all the equipment. Where you get enough time to plan, You're right. do all that into kind of wonderful stuff. competition mode. So, and I couldn't be too aggressive with her. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be too aggressive with her. I even called the CEO and the manager and the team the, the Thursday, two weeks before we, we, we leave to Miami, we left to Miami, and told him I do not want um, Kim Lee on the team. Mm -hmm. um, she's not, she's not gonna, to she, she's gonna pull us down, you know? Right. And I, I want that same night, I told my team, if you're all going for bronze medal, let me know today. Mm -hmm. So that I won't put all the effort into Coming out my house at five o'clock in the morning to come to Hilton train that gold medal ever. You know <laughs> exactly. You know, and the Monday she performed well. Mm -hmm. And you know what she did? She won Caribbean Pastry Chef of the Year 2016 wow. at Taste of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So she went from high to low to high. She didn't give up. Any other chef would have said, "Okay, I, I done." They don't. They don't understand. They don't like me. I gone. Finish mm -hmm. that. But her determination and her passion. And, and it was very emotional for, for me on the night with her too as well because she cried like a baby, you know. Mm. She did not understand where was leading and pushing her in the direction she was pushing, you know. Mm. I think she's the only person that got a gold medal in that category too. And the guy from Bahamas who won PhD Chef of the Year 2013, 14 and 15, he didn't even... Wow. Yeah. Okay. She, she mashed it up. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're actually there now in competition, mm -hmm. You look around and you see some familiar faces, yeah. some not so familiar. Take me through the the adrenaline rush that's that's competition, getting ready to actually compete and do your thing. We're a team. We cook we cook as a team. We move as a team. For breakfast, for lunch, for individual competition, whoever's competing, my whole team goes. Mm -hmm. We don't leave and stray and walk around, no. Um, and, and not under of a strict Research from me. We have fun, you know. We have plenty of fun. We we relax environment, you know. Mm -hmm. We're Caribbean people, so in the room we had to take a little drink, mm -hmm. laugh it off, you know, have some fun, watch mm -hmm. some TV, get them in the mood. When I say for seriousness, um, they were they were a bit so much in gear that when it's time to switch from laugh to the serious, they they understand. Okay, guys, this is the time now that we have to showcase Trinidad Tobago on the map. I try not to panic. Even even on a day with a team competition. I know we were behind by seven and a half minutes because mm -hmm. I have everything time off. Mm -hmm. And they, they knew that the pastry chef knew she was behind. She started to panic. I'm like, no, we have enough time. You know, but I kept all the time to myself, you know. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't let her know because we've got two hours to go, three hours to go. They know that when one thing is finished, they're supposed to move on to the next thing and a natural clicker in their head. Um, okay, 20 minutes is gone. They're supposed to be finished. So I know it was behind because the judge came to me and said, okay, um, train down to Tobago, you're going to be playing in six minutes. Mm -hmm. And I watched my team realize that, hey, we're still a little bit behind, but okay. Because usually judges love to see the whole team in unison okay. helping play it. And okay, so the patient chef, you stay there. My butcher guy, Brandon Maharaj, you stay there with the, you make sure the meat's cooked perfect. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, chef, the meat ain't cooked, the meat can't cook. And he was like panicking, like, don't panic. We need steaks. 
Really, America, mm -hmm. um, port can be done at 150, 155 now. Mm -hmm. They accept that now, you know? Mm -hmm. We're only in the Caribbean, we want our port dry right out. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so give us some time to rest, and, and it's for me, of course, our appetizer dish is ready. So let's start to play appetizer mm -hmm. and go. Um, so for my leadership, for the team, was not to panic. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for them not to watch other teams mm -hmm. because you see other teams come as logos, the sponsors going on the front, sponsors going on the back. Mm -hmm. Chefs that have 15 to 20 years experience at some of the top restaurants, hotels around the It's Caribbean. a mind game, isn't it? A yeah. lot of it is a mind game. If you get them to freak out early, you pretty much... Correct. You could win. Correct. You know, and I on a team on that day, the Wednesday afternoon, um, the judge came and after the competition, the judge came and he was so impressed with Trinidad Tobago. Got other teams quarreling with the mm -hmm. manager, answering back to the manager. Chef's egos, chef's mm -hmm. egos, mm -hmm. chef's egos. <laughs> and and he was very, he was very impressed that how when they give a command, they responded without any hesitation, without any you know, mm -hmm. because it, 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 we have to install in their heads the young chefs that as a leader. Especially in this competition, if I tell them, for instance, put the dessert on top of the appetizer, you put it, you know, answer no question. Like, why do that, you know? But I, I must give credit to the Trinidad Tobago team. I must give credit to my team. Um, they did excellent. They, they, even guys that weren't too sure they're going to get gold medal in the individual category, mm. got gold medal in the individual category mm. for the first year. So. They, they never tasted a bronze or a bronze. They got silver and gold, you know, which is good. Because my first year as on the team, I got a bronze. Mm. <laughs> and, and they were like, even for the junior chef, Anelka Mendoza, she was a bit saddened because she got gold, but she didn't, she didn't win the coveted prize of junior chef of the year. Right. But I was like, no, you did well. You did absolutely well for a 21-year-old, first time in the competition against 12 other nations and you got a gold medal, you're, that is still phenomenal in my eyes, you know? Mm. You did proud. You, you heard the comment, so next year when we go back, you and know you plan what... to go back next year. Yeah, we, we will be back next right. year. We will be back next year. Well, before you get to showing us one of these dishes, what, because you had team gold. Yes. Your winning dishes, what were they? For the appetizer, our, our menu was, um, I label it um, on, off of um, Paterskin, some soccer artists um, on the Jamian rhythm. Mm -hmm. Let us take to Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So it started off with a Tobago um, chicken bisque. Because the Missy Basket, we got chicken, beef, and pork. So Isn't that bit easy? It was, chicken, it was, beef, and pork? It was easy this year, yeah. They didn't give the whole nine yards of Missy Basket with, with um, starch and veg, no. Okay. They only gave the protein this year. Wow. Um, that's because the, the teams last year at the post mortem said that, you know, we they want to use things that are indigenous to the island. Okay. So the judge said, okay, we work with you, we'll just give you the meat, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did a Tobago chicken bisque um, with a citrus infused um, chicken roulade, with a chicken stuffed dumplings, um, a roasted corn salsa, uh, finished with uh, Angostura aromatic bitters mm. and candy carrot puree. Nice. The main course, we, we did a Christmas team because we were wondering through the course of the training session what haven't Trinidad and Tobago done? We did a curry, we did a jira, we did this already. I said, no, what? Let's do Christmas in let's do Christmas in June. Mm. So we did a, a beef. We took the beef and did beef and provision pastels. We carry old banana leaves. Um, mm. We wrap our pastels up there, you know. Um, we did a clove scented pork, so it tastes like ham. Mm. Um, we did a herb infused beef with a curry shoe sauce, beetroot, kuchila. Kuchila? Yeah. <laughs> kuchila is a, a, a condiment. They have a lot of anchar, masala, mustard I've heard oil. kuchila, but it was never used as a <laughs> condiment. <laughs> yeah. Beetroot, kuchila, um, and we did sauce vegetables. What? Yeah, some sauce vegetables. I'll tell you, some kind of Christmas. <laughs> Main course, uh, for dessert, sorry, we did a pimento mousse. Top with a pumpkin compote, uh, mango and cayenne coolie, sorrel and rum sauce to tie back in the Christmas mm. feeling, you know. Finish off with a sorrel dusty meringue sticks. Mm. And the judges were blown away. When the judges said, when he came, uh, um, Chef Augusto, when he came to critique our place, he was, he was like, phenomenal. Because we, we, we took the Christmas theme 
in both islands and showcase it on the plate for the for the taste of the Caribbean. We'll be back on Breakfast in Barbados where Adrian shows us the winning appetizer for the Trinidad and Tobago team at Taste of the Caribbean. Breakfast in Barbados. Over the years, MIS has been known for its high-quality food and flavoring products. And now we bring you MIS Essences. Essences. We Essences. offer a wide variety of exciting and unique flavors like almond, cinnamon, strawberry, banana, pineapple, coconut, lemon, vanilla, and mixed essence. Now you will have all the essence you need when baking your cake, preparing your desserts, or mixing a refreshing cocktail. Available island-wide at all leading supermarkets. Make it special with MIS Essences today. 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 are the most affordable source of protein around. They contain choline to help with your memory as well as vitamin A, B, D, and K. Eggs promote healthy hair and nails because of their high sulfur content and wide array of vitamins and minerals. Star Trek eggs are very, very tasty. Be wise and follow the star, I say. Eat Star Trek eggs each and every day. Star Trek. Welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados, and with me is Chef Adrian Cumberbatch, and this is the winning appetizer for the Taste of the Caribbean team. This is what, well, a sample, basically, yes, 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 of yeah. what Trinidad and Tobago produced as the winning team. So what is it that we're doing today? For, remember, we, we got chicken appetizer. Mm -hmm. So we did chicken three ways. So we serve a chicken soup, a citrus-infused chicken, and a chicken stuffed dumpling. So we utilize the chicken in three different ways um, at the competition. Right. Right? And we also start with a roasted corn salsa as well. So we're gonna start the plate up. Yeah. All right. So what we did, the, the chicken broth, the bones from the chicken, we mm -hmm. use we debone the chicken leg and thigh, and we make a stock. Right. And from that stock, we add a little bit of coconut, a lot, little bit of ginger, garlic, shatterbelly, mm -hmm. all the, all the trimmings from the onions stuff that was cutting up. We toss it in here. Now before you go any further, mm -hmm. remember, Barbados. What is shatterbelly? A stronger version to culantro or okay. cilantro, okay. Um, they call it in Puerto Rico and stuff like that. But nice. uh, it's grow wild in your backyard. It's very has a very dominant and pungent flavor. Okay, so you yeah. got to be careful how much you put it. The, the, the more is better too as well. But well, it, it is okay. it is nice. It's very sweet and nice. It's oh. a real background flavor behind any Trinidad and Tobago cuisine. Nice. All right. Okay. So um, we're gonna add the corn salsa. So roast corn, you know, like on the highway by um, you go up by the highway by. In Warren's, Warren's the city yeah. guys selling your rose corn. Where you can smell it before you can see it. Yes, There's yes, yes. There's something about that, man. Yes. There's something about that. <laughs> see, you can't, you can't lose all your beige and rich, right? <laughs> There's something about the smell. So this is a regular homemade um, dumpling. So we said, what we're going to do with the dumpling, not make a regular dumpling and put it on. So, you, so the, the end pieces from your chicken, before it was rolled, we cut it up, season it up nicely with broad leaf thyme and fine thyme and garlic and what's not. Mm -hmm sort it up and then we stuff it in the dumpling. So you get a style of chicken. All right, we're gonna add the chicken roulade. We get a little slice of the chicken roulade. So, so this is where you would take a piece of chicken, kind of um, flatten it out. Is, is that what you did with this? This is, this is a leg and tie. Mm -hmm. We didn't flatten it. We just okay. we make a, a balancing with it in mm -hmm. foil mm -hmm. and just pre-cook it in the oven until it holds the shape. Um, this is seasoned, heavily seasoned with a uh, green seasoning, lemon zest, lime zest, grapefruit zest. So, because the words you use in the competition, citrus infused. When you say that, the judge they have to taste it. Citrus, yeah, I totally they have to agree. taste it. <laughs> they I have totally to taste agree. it. And there's never enough citrus in things for me. No, <laughs> love it. Got one more piece because we're home now. <laughs> So 
dish and we didn't use the coconut shell because it would not be as practical to use in Miami. So we use shot glasses for the tea, mm -hmm. but since you're back here in Barbados, from your home, um, you ever had soup from a coconut shell? Yet? Never. So this, the first thing. this is a fish broth, and we just fill this the chicken broth, chicken not broth. fish. <laughs> <laughs> we fill it nicely in the coconut, mm. and there you have it. My favorite time, tasting time, Chef Adrian. This is a replica, basically, yes. of the winning appetizer. So go through it one more time and I'm going to have a taste. Oh, and thank you so much to Dimes for providing us with this juice and Blaze and Williams, wonderful cutting board that we got to use today. So tell me all about this here again while I taste. So this, this, this is the chicken stuffed dumpling. Mm -hmm. So homemade and it's a bagel, we call something called left hand dumpling. <laughs> What is left-hand dumpling? Left-hand dumpling is, is a little thing they say that they use to, to, to hook men. Women use to hook men. So you make the dumpling with your left hand only. <laughs> so maybe I may hook you today. <laughs> it's for women to hook men, not men to hook women. Um, it is the citrus infused chicken with the roasted corn salsa and a nice shot of the coconut and chicken broth. This is how you know food is good. You ever watch children eating? We never know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glad you could enjoy it. This <laughs> friend of mine will say, "When you coming back?" That is nice. I can see why you guys want. And, and, and this is only appetizer. Only the appetizer. <laughs> I would love that dessert though. All right, we're gonna make an attempt to drink this from the coconut. Woo! It's gingery and garlicky and lovely and sexy. <laughs> Chef, thank you so much. My pleasure. My wow. Pleasure. That's it for breakfast in Barbados. Thank you so much for joining me today. Morning's here, not much time.